Okay, here we go. A quick guide to plugging a data projector into an iPad. This was on a Promethean. It's one of those fixed ones in a classroom that makes it a bit more complicated. How to make an iPad 1 and an iPad 2 work through one of these uh, video systems that we have in a classroom, like a Promethean, something like that. So it's dead easy. You do have a box on the wall here which has what they call VGA leads in. Now VGA leads are basically video graphics something or others, don't ask me what the last one is. But what you need to find is first of all your computer. Here's the computer, lovely Dell sitting down here, and I need to find the VGA cable, the cable that goes out to the projector, and there it is, okay? So, if you watch, I'm going to unplug this thing here. When I unplug it, the screen will go out and the projector will go out. Watch this. And gone. So there we've got nothing. So now, what we need is a lead. The lead is called a VGA to iPad adapter. This you can get from Apple. You basically plug your VGA lead into the VGA to iPad adapter and then take this end and on an iPad 2 simply plug it into the place where you'd normally plug your charging socket into. At this point with a bit of luck your projector will pick it up and your screen will pick up your iPad automatically and you're away. You can go through all your apps. So that's dead easy. Whatever works on the iPad will work on these screens here. The only thing to remember is that uh, with the interactive ones, like some of our visual stimulation stuff, here we go, visual effects, pixel swarm, good example. Do remember that touching this screen or touching the big screen there is going to have no effect. It will only work on the iPad screen. But you can see whatever I do on this screen mirrors up there. Now on an iPad 2, this is really simple. It is just basically mirroring whatever we have on there. An iPad 1 is different because an iPad 1 doesn't have mirroring capabilities. So let's plug this into an iPad 1 and on the iPad 2, this would have happened by now, but it's not. I'll just move my cup of tea. But it's not. What's happened is there's nothing doing because this doesn't mirror. However, what you can do is you can mirror your photographs. That's the only thing, photographs and videos. So if I go into photographs, go into my photograph album here, and there's some photographs. Now the way to show this is on a slideshow. And if I go start slideshow, now these should come up on the big screens. So there you go. And now you're mirroring the photographs. Now, this is a slideshow, so the moment you touch that screen, it stops the slideshow. So make sure you don't touch the iPod. So a good idea is photographs you want to use, put them into different albums. Like if there's signs or something like that, you may be doing a string of visual signs for a child who has autism to let them know what you're doing today. We want to put it up on the big screen, so I might have visual signs, uh, five signs for this morning, put them into a folder or an album as they call it, and then just start your slideshow to go through that. So, iPad 1 doesn't mirror, iPad 2, very simply plug it in, and the iPad 2's will mirror. The iPad 3's will also mirror when they come out as well. Here's hoping. So it's as easy as that. Although that got across the basics, maybe what I'll do is I'll record that in the studio and you'll be able to see it properly. There you go, Richard Hurstwood, a little bit of iPad training there, how to connect your data projector in a classroom, a fixed one, to your iPad. Don't forget the website, www.multi-sensory-room.com co.uk. Hopefully see you on some of the courses and don't forget to have a look for our online training.